welcome to IDFC First Bank presents Leaders of Tomorrow Season 11. I'm Sunanda Jai Seelan. All through this season, we're going to be traveling to 20 campuses across the country, talking to India's young minds about what matters the most to them. Today, we're joining you live from the Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science in Chennai, talking about, amongst other future technologies, ChatGPT and the opportunities and challenges presented by such technologies. We're in conversation with educationists, with lawyers, with entrepreneurs to talk and understand the opportunities and challenges of future technologies and how it can be harnessed and harnessed effectively, as well as hearing directly from the students themselves. Thank you so much to the experts who are here with us today. And uh, it's great having all of the students and having really the energy and hearing from the future entrepreneurs and the future employees. And as all of you are heading out into the workplaces soon, to really understand your approach to today's most topical and newsworthy conversations. That's our attempt here at the Leaders of Tomorrow Hangout. And we're talking, of course, about the role of AI and chat GPT. And what is the role of this in education? And while we're saying education, we have an entrepreneur who's joining us. Uh, we have a lawyer and we have educationists as well. So we are going to have a very well-rounded conversation today. So I'm very excited and thank you again for your time. I want to come to you first for your opening comments, Dr. Alexander. What is the role really of future technology when it comes to education? Thank you, Sunanda, and a very good morning to each one of you. As an educationist, I would find an evolution in technology. When I am making that statement, I say with the realization that right from my school days to college days to being a teacher, an assistant professor, a professor, an administrator, I could find that education is always on the roadmap of evolution in technology, evolution even in the teaching pedagogy. And, uh, and therefore, I'm not surprised that today we have the chat GPT, uh, I mean, ruling uh, many areas, including education. As I look at it, you know, I started my days from, you know, ordinary overhead projector days to slide projector to computer aided technology. And today, you know, you have everything on the mobile phone. And that is how I think things have become very, very easy and comfortable. And knowledge acquisition is never a problem today. Those days you have to go to library, sit there for hours together and take notes, make copies and then use it. But today, it is never a problem. You know, you can just, I mean, I have a doubt on anything, I can ask. You no, know, like for example, the AI comes to my rescue. In fact, I need to have some small clues, you know, just give the keywords and immediately I get the answer for that. And therefore, in a, in a split of a second, I'm able to get the information at ease and I'm able to do that. Chat GPT that we have today at the moment, you know, is very convenient, very comfortable. But I wanted to tell you that it is a product of artificial intelligence. You know, it is a kind of a machine language that you have. You can clarify doubts, you can get information. Most of the time it is uh, correct, but sometimes it can be faulty also. But then never, I think it cannot substitute and replace the teacher. Because a teacher, a professor, moves with the students with a human touch. No, that is something that's very important. That is the natural intelligence. And uh, that can uh, never be replaced by any, any high funda gadget or technology. And therefore, we Fantastic have to respect to the that. traditional one and also make use of the facilities that we are having and move on. As I told you, even to be a teacher, I have to keep evolving. Unless and otherwise I update myself in the latest technology, I am outdated. Sure. So I have to be so, yeah, yeah. and so also the students. Thank you for your opening remarks. Uh, I want to come to you next, Prasanna. And uh, you are, of course, approaching future technologies uh, as an entrepreneur, but you also wear the hat uh, of being very closely associated with an industry body, leading the industry body, of course. Uh, and my question to you is, uh, while you can talk about the role of uh, AI, et cetera, when it comes to education, but you are the person who's going to be hiring possibly some of these students. 
so when you're doing that, what are you looking for? Do you, do you want them to be well aware of these technologies? Is that crucial for you? 100%. Okay. Because while every single industry out there, whether they are related to computers, information technology, IT, whatever that might be coding, any even unrelated industry, what you might think is unrelated, uses AI. We use AI in our production planning, in our forecasting, in knowing what our customers want, in predicting what our customers, um, uh, what they are going to order, when they are going to order. We, are going to, we use predictive analysis. We use data analysis in uh, checking with our marketing uh, material, whatever is going out, is it actually uh, approaching? I mean, how, is, how are our customers relating to that? So analytics, data analytics, predictive analysis, the chatbots, virtual assistants, they are used in every single industry out there. And definitely, I would want my future team members, my employees to have knowledge in all of that, in prompt engineering, even to use chat GPT. You should have knowledge on prompt engineering. You should know how to ask the right questions to chat GPT to get the right answers, the answers that you're looking for. So the knowledge in AI and understanding in AI, the da data analysis is very important. So uh, our two opening remarks so far, I wouldn't want to call it polar opposites, but are differing. So I want to come to you, Dr. Raghavan. Uh, and you are, of course, an educationist. Uh, and uh, offline, you were talking to me about real intelligence versus artificial intelligence, echoing to some sense what Dr. Alexander said. So what is the role, according to you, of future technology in education? See, uh, if you ask me, RI always is above AI, because AI is created by the RI, real intelligence. And all the piece of, the only difference is that you have an advantage with AI over the real intelligence. As rightly said, that we go to library, we talk to professors or people who is expert in particular area, and uh, it is limited. The flow of information to every individual becomes limited in real world. But in the case of alt, uh, AI, what happens? You are able to get piece of information from entire world, and it's a compiled pack of information. It's a better version of the detail that you are going to get it. So in that way, uh, currently, the younger generation are blessed to have the complete information in the best possible way. So in that way, kudos to AI development and the technology. And uh, only one thing we all should remember that uh, it has to be used constructively. So ethical use of AI is what today's world requires. Education requires ethics behind the use of AI. Okay, so that part of it, teaching AI, practicing AI, utilizing it as a tool to solve problem or to better or enhance the uh, entrepreneurial aspect of it, everything is fine. But along with that, the ethics of AI should also be incorporated so that uh, everybody utilizes it to the best of everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no shortcuts in life. That's the purpose of uh, uh, my role in education. So my question to you, Raj Shikran, um, are the laws in India keeping up fast enough when it comes to? Uh, Good morning to everyone here. AI is going to rule. There is no doubt about it. Of course, there is no law to curtail even. Example, of course, you are all grown-up children, young uh, entrepreneurs, and we don't have law to stop whatever is available in the internet because it is all over. The server is placed somewhere in different country, and we have Information Technology Act, we have uh, IPC, Indian Penal Code. So where you'll fix whom, how? So these are the lacuna in the law, which is being Every now and then, the parliament discusses and the experts give their advice and they amend laws. We are a growing country. AI is doing a wonderful job. Yes, RI manages, creates AI. And there are a lot of issues with related to legal implications. We'll slip into a short commercial break on that note. Back in just a moment. Do stay tuned.
welcome back. You're with us here on IDFC First Bank presents Leaders of Tomorrow Hangout. Today, we're joining you from the Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science in Chennai to talk about the role of future technologies, including chat GPT, when it comes to the field of education and entrepreneurship in the country today. I want to hear from the students. Yes. Glad to see first question coming in Good from morning. a female student. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm Neha from EC second year. So we all know that AI is making our life much easier. But nowadays we can see every student is taking advantage of open AI stat GPT. Like whatever assignments or online exams we get, uh, students were simply or blind, blindly relying on chat GPT. <laughs> Like due to this uh, problem solving ability or uh, capacity to think out of the box is literally going down. So do you think this is helping students in a good way? Your point is right, but at the same time, this also has put a, a certain, uh, what do you call, elevated uh, information for the teachers or the professors. So it has indicated that our level of thinking as educators should go up or catch up with the development of AI. The critical thinking will never die, but it is there. But the chat GPT or all these things is helping you or facilitating you with the piece of information. 100% it will not be able to connect all the dots. So that is where our uh, educational intervention happens. So the kind of questions that has been framed and given is so unique that you will not be able to connect the dots is what is that. So definitely this will happen. Sooner or later this will happen. People will need some time to get adapted to that. Now understanding of what is happening in chat GPT is happening by and large with the community, educational community. Over a period of time, you can see that evolution happening in the minds of the educators also. It cannot be trained, but once they start seeing the patterns, definitely there will be a reformation. Okay, proactive educationalists will definitely do. Mediocre educationalists will never do. Okay, the educationalists will decide what type of institution we want, what type of children we want. Okay, that sets the benchmark for the institution. I, I want you to actually uh, supplement to that, talking about how institutions like yourself are training your professors and teachers yeah. as well. Yeah, definitely I think uh, what you have said is very important and also you know that the information that is available through artificial intelligence is a ready-made reply, isn't it? There is no creativity, there is no innovation in that and probably a student can take the clue, can get the kind of rider from that and, and begin to think out of the box because a machine can think only at a, at a finite level. Now, what uh, we are doing in education here is that, that we, you all would have known about the flipped classroom. Now, our classroom teaching should not be the way that it was then, like the board and chalk method, or the teacher comes and gives a lecture for one hour or something like that. Now, with the information already available, the teacher can prescribe to the students that tomorrow when you're coming, on this topic, you come prepared. So the students would have definitely, uh, I mean, gone in for information gathering, information acquisition, and after that you come and you begin to discuss about the different answers that you got for a question. And there comes the new thoughts and how, you know, how creative you can be, how you can think in deviation to what the AI reply has given for a particular question. So this flipped classroom will enable for more clarity. There used to be a concept called open book tests. Have you heard of? Chat GPT is exactly like that. We are not inventing something great. There, at that time, there was no technology. Book was the technology. Now, it is something else replacing the book. So don't worry about it. These are all quite normal. Normal. We are reinventing in a different form with different tools. Okay? In fact, when I was a school student, we had the open book type yeah. where we have to take. The thing is that you should know where the answer is in the book. If you have not read the book at all, you will not know where the answer is. It was there. I have uh, done that in my school days. Any other questions? Yes. Good morning to the panel members and also my friends. I am Pratik Shunayar. I am pursuing my BTEC uh, CSC and specialization with AI and ML. So my question today is basically about generalized AI in the field of inclusive education. So inclusive education is basically an education or the classroom 
where both the students and the students with learning disabilities are present together and uh, educated together. So can an AI improvise or can an AI bring a mindful learning environment in such a kind of inclusive classrooms? So as an educationist, sir, I want your views on it. Thank you for giving this thought process, OK? So last year, this particular project was initiated, project-based learning, OK? And uh, many students from across the country have participated in that. And uh, this course has been curated by eminent professors. This is outside the school. And uh, it was about how do we use uh, the digital technology into uh, children with special needs. You won't believe, children have come out with excellent projects, 21-day project. The timeline was also given. So it is a creative an ingenuity in applying certain particular area to the needs of the child. OK? So that kind of, slowly, as entrepreneurs or what you call a technologist, slowly one, one tool you develop. And then somebody will integrate all these things. Then the product becomes complete. OK, so it is possible to include AI with children, uh, for children with special needs. There are certain things which are already happening in terms of uh, colors, children who can respond to certain colors well. So for them, everything is in terms of their responding colors. The content will be appearing on the screen based on the response of the child. It understands the color sensitivity of the child and then everything will be in that. So the maximum absorption happens. And it regards to audio informations also. OK? So the language options are coming. So these are all the things that plays a major role for the children with special needs and uh, cater to that. But of course, these kind of things will not be able to help them in autism and uh, muscular dyslexia, all these things. Everything is cognitive part of it we can address with the AI and not the physical part of it. So the integration of automation, as well as uh, uh, the cognitive aspect of it, will supplement them far and far better. So you know Stephen Hawkins? A person with special needs, correct? In a different form. Technologies were developed two, three decades before well. Now it will get improved. Sure. I want you to actually add the fact that uh, through Fiki Flow, you are teaching STEM to yes. students in corporation schools. Can you yes. help us understand why it is necessary at that level, uh, yeah. the school level, for you to be teaching? So this actually, to add to that inclusivity, inclusivity not with just um, special needs. I would say inclusivity in terms of economic disparity that is there in the society. So as Fiki Flo, uh, I'm part of the organization and with the Chennai chapter, we wanted to bring in STEM literacy to students of corporation schools. And over the last academic year of 2022-23, we have trained over, we have taught over 3,000 students. And here, what we aim to do was to bridge the gap between the availability of technology amongst different schools, among, amongst different stratas of society. Because what uh, children from different backgrounds and children in institutions like this and you know, schools with better equipment, they were able to handle um, the implications of COVID and the pandemic and virtual learning better than children from corporation schools. So they were, there was a big lag in their um, understanding and knowledge. So that's where we at Fiki Flow, we brought in the STEM literacy, wherein we taught the practical um, applications of what is being taught in as theory in school, especially in physics, if you learn a theorem and if you learn something theoretically, we train teachers to go and show them as experiments and in school. And we also taught them basics of robotics just to show the children that robotics is not something which is uh, available or which is accessible only to those with uh, a little more econ uh, you know, economic um, availability or independence. And it can be, you know, it is accessible to all. Future technologies are here to stay and it's about harnessing it and harnessing it effectively whether it's in the field of education or for entrepreneurs such as yourselves. We're traveling to 20 such campuses across the country discussing the most topical themes. For today it's a wrap though. Thank you so much for watching. Hello.